Uh, hello, my name is Jason Shohet, and today we're going to be talking about value at risk, uh, especially the terminology around VAR. We're not going to go into the computations of VAR. That would take a lot longer, and there, there are videos around that already. Instead, we're going to focus on different terms that you might see associated with VAR. So the first one is credit VAR. What is credit VAR? And sometimes you might see market VAR. So the difference between the two is that credit value at risk the underlying data are defaults. These are counterparties that you've lent money to, if you're a bank, let's say, that might not pay you back. These are corporations and governments and others who've issued bonds that you've bought, and they're not going to pay back their bond payments. On you know, So those are default situations. Market VAR, the underlying data, are not defaults. They are returns. There are gains and losses associated with market instruments that the firm holds. So let's say you're a bank and you hold certain stocks, certain bonds, certain derivative products. Uh, those are marked to market every day and uh, tomorrow or the next week they could be valued at much less than they are today. So that's the risk that due to changes in the market the market instruments that you hold might lose value. Uh, both market VAR and credit VAR attempt to answer a similar question. Uh, what's the worst that can go wrong? How much could we lose with a high degree of confidence? The main difference is that on the market VAR side, it's saying how much could we lose in relation to these market instruments that we hold. And on the credit VAR side, it's saying how much can we lose uh, in relation to the, the credit instruments that we um, have invested in, right? Uh, mortgages that we've uh, issued to people, loans, bonds, etc. So it's looking at the credit side. Um, another term you might see is stressed VAR or SVAR. So what that means is, well, here, let's go back to some criticism of VAR that occurred in the past. Uh, during the 2007 to 2008 bubble collapse, um, a lot of firms that had been computing VAR uh, realized that they grossly underestimated their value at risk. So the Basel Committee has, has instructed firms to stress their VAR. So a lot of them are using what's called historical simulation. And what the stress, how this is how the stress works at a high level. They go back in time to a period where there was a lot of stress. So if we were to compute VAR today, we might look back over the last 10 years and say, wow, 2008 was a really bad year, or 2007, it was terrible. Let's take some of the stresses from that year or those years and apply them to the assets that we own today to see what what would happen. Um, so if they take from, of, of, from a prior year, let's say you're going to have approximately 252 altered prices because there are about 252 working days in a year, and they're going to revalue um, our current asset prices uh, according to the stresses to the to the risk factors if you will that occurred during 2007 or 2008 and that'll create a histogram of gains and losses a lot of losses probably um, on our current on our current assets market instruments and firms will compute the VAR on that that stressful histogram and uh, this explains what's the worst that can happen typically they do it for a 10 day period so what's the worst that we could lose in 10 days to, or two weeks at 99 percent confidence based on stressed market data that's s var stressed var um, another term you might see is c var uh, c var you might think that's credit VAR, but really it usually refers to conditional VAR, which um, is really quite different. Uh, conditional VAR, it's also termed expected shortfall, <laughs> and there's another term for it that means the exact same thing, and it's called tail value at risk. So tail value at risk, expected shortfall, conditional VAR, they're all the same thing. And they're answering a different question. What is the average loss? Not what is the worst loss, but what is the average loss amongst the 1% of worst 
possible outcomes. So with VAR, we, we know there's a confidence level. Like we're computing market VAR uh, at 90% confidence. That means that we're going to exclude 1%, but the 99% we're going to compute. What's the worst that can happen with 99%? Um, well, why exclude that 1%? And that's what expected shortfall answers that question. It says, you know what? Those two or three days of the year that comprise that 1%, those, those days the firm could, could lose millions of dollars. Why exclude that? Let's look at the average loss amongst that worst 1%. Um, and that helps to also answer some of the criticism of VAR uh, as it was done in 2007 and 2008. In fact, uh, the Basel uh, Committee on Banking Supervision has actually suggested that banks move to, it, to expected shortfall or conditional VAR as a replacement for the normal VAR. And uh, let me just leave you with one more thing. I know it's, I'm running out of time here. Banks allocate uh, about 60% of their regulatory capital to credit risk versus only 15% to market risk, and the rest is, is operational risk so, and, and other risks. But the main, the main thing to understand here is that the, the VAR on the credit side, the credit value risk, is usually much higher than on the market value risk side. Um, and that kind of makes sense intuitively for banks when we think that a lot of what banks do are loans. Uh, they have these loan portfolios and if, if there are rising interest rates or there's a massive un unemployment that occurs, uh, that, could, that could result in the bank, you know, people walking away from their homes, uh, uh, issuers of bonds that are not going to make the bond payments, um, and that will the company could lose, the bank could lose a ton of money there, more money typically than on the market side. And so uh, the factors that play into credit VAR are different than the market VAR side. The computations are widely different. On the market VAR side, we're looking at, let's say, volatilities and things like that. On the credit side, uh, we're looking at uh, probability of defaults. What, what's our exposure at default? And uh, there's another term called loss given default which is a percentage of exposure at default uh, because typically if there's a default you can always re you can recover some of a loan let's say maybe you recover 10 percent 50 percent 20 percent so loss given default is the percentage of the exposure at default and um, the reason I'm just mentioning this is just to illustrate that the factors if you will the risk factors that go into uh, the, the credit VAR models are quite different than uh, the market VAR models, but um, management takes both of these VAR numbers into account and sets aside regulatory capital to account for each of them. Thank you very much, and I hope I explained this well. Thanks.